Now, the military high command on the trail of the killers of four officers and 13 soldiers in Delta State has relaxed the siege to Okoma and Okoloba communities, creating opportunities for some indigents to return to their ancestral homes. Now, this happened as the Delta State Advisory and Peace Building Council has condemned the killing of army officers and soldiers at Okoma community and urged the presidency and the Nigerian army to open all access to the affected communities for the uninhibited and safe flow of movement and return by those who fled their homesteads. The heavy presence of operatives, uh, and we continue, where meanwhile it's a cry of hunger and starvation for residents of Ibomoturu communities in the southern Ijo council area of Bayelsa state, as the military continues the manhunt for the killers of 17 soldiers in Okoma Delta state. Placing the figure of the dead at 50, the people also pleaded with the military to allow food and humanitarian aid into their communities. Ovyotemi George has details. Igbomotor 1 and 2 are separated by River Sangana. The area is now devoid of the hustle and bustle of the rural life it's known for because of a military operation in search of the killers of 17 soldiers in Okwama, Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. In Igbomotor 1, there are voices of lamentation about hunger and starvation over a halted agrarian lifestyle of economic sustenance. They did not allow anybody to move, to go to our fishing ports, our fishing, and even to go to our farms to get crops to eat. So since from Sunday to now, we are under starvation. We are short of food. We have been besieged, no going out, no coming in. Then the soldier man that shot the gun was shouting on us, no market, no fishing, no farming, no school. That was what we hear from a distance. So we want a governor to come to our aid, to rescue us, send foods so that at least it can sustain us. Let the investigation go on, but let our liberty be given to us. You don't go see any man for a year. The only person where you go see, woman. And food, you know, get, because all the people where they get stuff, they don't look their stuff, run. Local boat where they go in, they bring food stuff for us, then bound the boat to come, come into the community, so they don't come. So even me, I'm talking here, sir. since morning, my brother, I don't tell you like, one cup of gari, never enter my belly. We for hungry. Arriving Igbomotoru 2, where there is a surveillance team, movement is a bit restricted because of ongoing military operations in the area. They mention a young boy which is called Amagbeni, that is what they mention. They don't want us to even move out. There's no good breathing, we cannot even sleep. Pursue us into the bush. There's no people in the community. All the leaders run away. The only person talking here as a spokesman is the only chief remaining in the community. And the elders are in starvation. No way to go bush. Everywhere is covered. The people who are dead are not yet found out all because some of them fall into the water. Some of them was in the bush. The list of people are not yet made, but I know it is more than around 50 or 50, more than 50. I want to appeal to the military to see that, you know, a crime that is committed, these are innocent people. Yes, I want to praise them for their professionalism by not coming to invade the community, killing innocent people and all that. I want to thank the Biosa State government, precisely the governor, for you know, making arrangements to see how you know, uh, humanitarian aid could be sent into the community. An amateur video obtained from the internet gives strength to reports that due to fear, some youth, women, including nursing mothers and children, have taken temporary refuge in the forests of Igbomotoro. Who are the casualties is a big question as one cannot independently confirm the identities of the dead in Ibomotoro until an official statement is released by the authorities. 
promising to be professional in the discharge of its duties, the army has also vowed to remain in Okwama and Igbomotoro until the masterminds of the national tragedy are arrested. Ovietime George, Arise News. Right. Well, joining us now is Navy Commodore Kunle Olawumi, retired. He's a former commandant of the Defense Intelligence College, Abuja, and former deputy defense attaché to France. Now, Commodore Olawumi is currently the HOD of International Relations and Diplomacy Department at Christland University, Abeokuta, Ogun State. He will also comment on the release students of Kaduna State abducted by terrorists. Good morning and a very warm welcome to The Morning Show, sir. Good morning and thanks for having me. Well, Commodore, how did we get here that uh, <coughs> civilians would uh, slaughter 17 soldiers and uh, in the Ohoro Forest, the Nigerian police force, they're also telling us that six of their men were killed, another six are still missing. In Imo State, two policemen were also killed. What happened to police community relations, army community relations, how did you know, the people lose confidence in the security agencies that they would just be slaughtering officers? What is the way forward? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. Um, looking for a way forward is going to be a very hard nut to crack. The scene you are seeing in recent times has been long time coming. Um, if you recall, um, in this same major delta, military men were being killed, you know. Uh, in 2005, 2006, 2007, during Obasanjo's time, you remember the OD episode? And when Yadu also came, you know, he was very firm and wanted to stop what was going on. Um, we moving into the Delta Delta time, and it was discovered that most of the things that were happening was mostly political. People that wanted to be governors, senators, were using armed boys to, you know, cause uh, trepidation and fear to uh, their opponents. And after the election, they are often abandoned. And when we went into Delta, then we discovered that most of the groups, the renegade groups, were affiliated to one politician or the other. And uh, the president called them to order, and at the end of the day, some of them um, stopped what they were doing, but majority of them refused. Um, on the air, I would like to mention some names that are still in the corridor of power. You know, uh, Alamese is gone, so it's one of them. And when the killing of soldiers was consistent and continuous, in 2007, I rather called all the military intelligence agencies together and actually give them the order to put this into an end. So he called the DIA, the NIA, the DSS, uh, Inspector General of Police, the chief of staff uh, to, to him then. And um, this thing uh, was stopped within one year of his uh, giving us that order. Uh, it's very disheartening for me in particular that this is happening again. Uh, because the amount of money the federal government spent then, the amount of men and materials that we lost, to put this to the point of this amnesty program that you're all talking about today. It's very, very, very painful to see that all those efforts, you know, during Yaradua's time has come to naught. The politicians have started again. Whatever you are seeing in Delta, I have the DNA structure of Delta in my hand. Uh, whatever you see going on now is political. What they're trying to do is to warm up for 2007. And at the end of the day, they're going to make the federal government to fight on two fronts. Uh, if you open the flank in Niger Delta now with what we're having in the north, the central government is going to collapse, basically. That's a dire picture th that you've painted. Now, take us through, because you were part of this process, and uh, it, it, as you're describing you know, the use of politics, the weaponizing of politics in this. What were those steps that were taken that you feel were most effective during your time that need to be reintroduced? Uh, I think the most important thing is uh, intelligence process you know, that we did then. 
uh, we noticed that the kinetic approach, you know, uh, was not working. We were losing men to Tom Polo, Soguma, George, Ateke, Tom, Asari, Dokubo. We were losing men to them all the time. Camp 5 was so difficult to go. And um, the DSS, you know, that was tasked with that job then, um, could, could not perform because they relied just on kinetic efforts. And I remember when they went to the barrier of one of the militant leaders, I don't want to start mentioning names now, uh, with a view to arresting him. They went with 80 scoots. They called those guys scoots, you know, to arrest him. When they got there, they met with about 500 fighters, you know, that were protecting this guy. And they basically capitulated, you know. So what we did was to um, apply um, soft intelligence. That's electronic intelligence. Uh, we use also geospatial intelligence locators to ensure we know where some of the key figures were. And we were able to get them. Uh, people like uh, Ateke Tom, uh, Suguma George, and so on. Uh, even Sarah Jokubo, we were invited to Abuja and we spoke to them. And when we also saw that they were also handicapped, you know, because they have leaders and politicians, we went after the, the top brass among them. And once we took him out from Angola, everything collapsed. So that's what we did. Okay, I mean, I'm excited if you know Niger Delta very well and you hear things like Camp 5, your ear pops up because that's the tributary at which you can get, you know, vessels in, you know, to the ports in Wari then. And that's the hub for most of these guys, you know, they stay at Camp 5. And once they lock up Camp 5, you cannot definitely, you know, come in there. You talked about using your special intelligence and all other things like that. So was the amnesty program a suggestion tool that came in you know, to be able to quell things down. And when those guys were told, okay, get off there, the new economy was created for them because that period also segued, most of those boys were also boys that segued into the fight from Wariden, you know, a Kredi Shakiri fight and all of that. I mean, I don't want to go on, you know, with like the names you had mentioned, but was the amnesty program to soften the deal then as we speak, number one, Number two, you talked about politics. Some other people have said this killing of the army might also be related to resource, you know, and they've talked about the bunkering that is going on around there and the endurance angle to the matter. And the fact that he that was part of those boys now have been empowered greatly by the state to be able to create a buffer and there's a rivalry across the groups. Can you also just talk us through the rivalry? And also, Talk us through the level of complicity, you know, by some of the forces, because at that time, too, you guys who had problems of complicity, because as you guys then in the military had striked, you know, a deal and orchestrated a plan, before you knew it, those boys in the creeks too were hearing all the things you were doing. Yeah, that's a multiple barrier question. Uh, so it's sorry, you know, I get excited when I see. <laughs> Yeah, but, but uh, I'm very clear about your questions. Uh, let's talk about the amnesty. Uh, the amnesty program was something, as I tell people sometimes, that I designed personally, you know. And I, we, we just pick it up from East Timor, you know. We saw what they did, and we just basically copy. It's not anything big. But what I've discovered is that it's not being implemented. It's been corrupted completely. I mean, that's not what we plan. And the idea of amnesty, even though it came from the Defense Intelligence Agency, but it was guided by Yaradwa himself. We had our options, option A, two, three, and Yaradwa actually didn't want uh, bloodshed. That was why everybody's enjoying what is amnesty, because we have the capacity at a time when they turn to DIA to focus on the issue. We, we, we actually got the capacity to take people out, whether in Nigeria or outside Nigeria. And um, when we had the option of taking somebody out in South Africa, Jared uh, yeah, actually called us to order that he doesn't want blockchain. It's better for us to take the people alive and get further intelligence. And actually, the idea of amnesty was reinforced by Jared yeah, option. Otherwise, it was easy for us to just take people out anywhere they are. And um, the issue of military compliance, of course, it has always been there. I will not defend military on that. Even right now, military gets involved in bunker activities. So that's not an issue. I mean, every egg, there will be one, I mean, one bad person there. But military has always been 
complicit. Do you, do you think that also heat up the tension as regards this current incident with be, the factionalization and the splinter group, yeah, you know, of the cells? Yeah. As I mentioned, let's say arrogantly, <laughs> that uh, I have the DNA of Delta. Um, what, whatever is going on in Bermatulu and some of this area, I, I know. One, because I've not left Delta since I left the military. Uh, fortunately, also, I was uh, a senior lecturer of intelligence and security studies in uh, Novena University for four years. So I, I basically trained all these militants, some of them that you are seeing. That's in Kuala. It's in Amai, Amai. But the school is actually based in Kuala. So I was there for four years, training all of them because they came to amnesty program. So I still have them. I know them. They talk to me. And uh, I know exactly what is going on there now. Uh, that's why I try to look at the big picture and say it is more political than economy. Um, I want to risk something by telling you the involvement somehow of Tantita. Uh, the federal government, you know, they're always making a mistake of trying to appease the militants or terrorists and so on. The guy that is being looked for right now, uh, they should investigate. He has Tantita protection. Who is that? I don't want to mention his name. So, but Tantita is the one fighting them, and Tantita has been doing a good job. It's very, on it's what, very, what it's very complex. Uh, that guy himself uh, was given part of the contract, Tantita project. So he also has a, uh, the capacity uh, provided by Tantita for him to actually protect. But when something went wrong somewhere and he felt aggrieved, he went there and did some of the things he did. But not alone. But this is not where we should start. Uh, these are intelligent. Uh, you know, some people want you know. to back it up and say, is there proof for all of this? You want me to go to that place and take pictures? <laughs> 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 one, one major thing that yeah. people talk about is yeah. failure of intelligence. And you have background, you know, in that area. Every time, even the military says, oh, people should assist them with intelligence. Why is the intelligence always failing? Is it something with the way our security system is designed? Some people have said technology. We need to deploy uh, technology. Uh, is it a new concept that people are just talking about technology, technology, when in other parts of the world we're so advanced? And do you think state police can help solve the problem? Because the state governors say, well, maybe if they control the security in their states, through the instrumentality of state police, maybe there will be an improvement. So I go back to my original question about the way forward. Yeah, but you've asked three questions in one, and I was following. The intelligence failure is one of them. Yes. What people don't understand about intelligence is that the practitioner themselves don't have problem. Because intelligence is basic. It's like uh, economic 101. Uh, the direction up to when you disseminate, they're, they're basic process. Uh, it's like mathematics, basically. But the point is, I want to disseminate to the director, whoever directs that uh, intelligent process. Once you disseminate, your job is done. It is always politics. If I can tell you many processes that we have tried to do in the past that the politicians will just kill it. Once you finish from DHQ, the defense court, and if you pass it to them, uh, th there's nothing you can do after that. There's nothing you can do after that. We have had cases where we are supposed to go and pick somebody up in Brazil. Once the, that, that government left, the next um, government decided that no, 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 we should kill it. So it's not that we fail most of the time. It's just because the political class, first of all, they are not as educated as they should. Most of them are not worthy of those offices because they can't even interpret uh, technical uh, data that you present to them. They can't even, they don't even have time. So I think we have a problem with the political class, not with intelligence failure. There are times also we provide intelligence, actionable intelligence, and they will tell us to stand down. You can't do anything. And something will happen later, and it becomes so disastrous and injurious to the nation. An intelligence officer will not come up and say, oh, but we told them and they didn't do it. We will just keep quiet and watch them. The intelligence failure and processes are something that has to do with political class, not the practitioners. If you go to DIA, go to DMI, go to DNI and Air Force, you will see a lot of information that we have in what we are trying to discuss, but they are, they are not going to do it. The way forward, 
I think we should look f at the politicians in the Delta. They're about to start again, as they did in 2007, 2006. And this is to provoke the army or the military to make mistakes. And once they make mistakes, um, then it's going to inflame that zone to the point that, as I said earlier, the federal government may have to fight on two fronts, and that's not good for them. They shouldn't look at what happened recently. They should try to project and say, okay, let us quickly call those politicians to order now. And uh, when it, if I come next time, I may start mentioning their names, but they are listening to me. They are trying to cause another problem and destroy all the effort of Yaradua in bringing amnesty to that area. Another way forward is that they should try to look at NDDC. NDDC. Uh, because that's one of the things we uh, promoted, that's the recommendation we made. A lot of money has gone to NDDC. They should do a forensic investigation of NDDC. Because my friend in Delta told me that most of the money is sent to that zone, that they are not seeing it. Corruption in NDDC and Ministry of Niger Delta and some of the agencies of government that are supposed to reduce the tension, hunger, and deprivation in that area. Everything has been done by the federal government, but the people that are implementing it are corrupt to the point that it is no longer efficient. And that's why that thing is coming up again. People are feeling the same way they were feeling in 2006, in 2004, where you are seeing the likes of Soboma, George, that are, We have gotten to that point again because nobody is actually checking the NDTC, how they're spending the money. Okay. State police. I asked you about state police. I have written paper for General Said once on this issue of state police. Uh, but the way Nigeria is today, I will not recommend it now. It's desirable. We, have, we, we could have done it like 10 years back. But now Nigeria is so fragile, so polarized now, that all the indices that actually led to First World War, if you study First World War, they, they are here now. I'm thinking if you start state police now, issue of nationalism, which is one of the elements, is going to be, it may facilitate, it may fast track the dissolution of this country. Now, let's take a look at, um, you know, you spoke about when you were engaged in the management of some of these crises in the past and the fact that these are armies, basically, in essence, that, that, that uh, are being battled. And the fact that kinetic force uh, it turned out not to be successful, as successful as you would have liked. Given the current humanitarian situation that's brewing at the moment, you look at the number of casualties, we, we're yet to really know what the real numbers of lives lost is. Do you think that violence, the use of violence, armed combat, was well managed in this situation? Could they have done better to prevent the loss of lives of innocent civilians? Yeah, um, I've listened to a lot of debates and discourse on this issue. And being a military mind, um, it's normal when you look at what happened in Gaza, Israeli Gaza war. When you hit military guys the way this guy did, uh, nothing's going to, st if I'm in the system, nothing's going to stop me from overrunning that place until we get whoever did it. And anybody that is hiding him, uh, we, we, we may be ready to take the person out. Because by now, I expect the community to have actually brought him out. We know his name, we know, his, we know everything. And if they say, oh, they're under siege, there's a lot of emotion. They're under siege. Oh, why not bring him out? You know him. You know where he stays. When they went to destroy his house, you knew where he ran to. Why not bring him out? So if you are comp uh, complacent or if you, you compromise security by hiding a criminal gang, then you get what you get. I, I don't want us to be emotional about it, that maybe military did well. It's like if Ruben now, if you go on that knife uh, and a doctor is supposed to conduct a surgical operation on you, and then your wife jump into the theater and shouting that they should, the blood is too much, they should, he's trying to control what the doctor's doing. People should allow military to do their job. They are highly trained. 
they're highly educated, they're not as illiterate as you think them. I, I had my PhD before, I, I, as a captain, Navy captain. And I have a lot of colleagues that have PhD. Most of them, they went to go uh, so, to so the, the, the commodore, the military, too. In, in a democracy, they are answerable to the rule of law. The rule of law, yeah. They cannot uh, take the law into their we, hands. We know about the rule of law more than you ever in the general you Go to National Defense College and go, and go and audit their programs. Human rights. That, my PhD paper was on human rights. Nigeria. You just go go my name, you sit on it. We know about human rights, we know no. about the Geneva Convention, we know about the rules of engagement. We are trained in all this. And we are getting better at it. Our school, our institution. I was commandant of Defense Intelligence College and I used to train journalists. We, we are opening up. We are not as crude as you think. No. We should allow the doctor to remove the cancer in about his hand or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so. They should not go and be disturbing the doctor. You should not do no, this. No, Allow no, the military so, so, to do so their a job. A couple of pushback to that will be, oh, we all saw what happened in OD, but the state later down the line was forced to pay compensation because the court ruled against them. So do we want that to continue at the expense of a community? Those people too have rights. And you cannot punish everybody when everybody's suffering. I mean, today we talk about the imbalance as regards Gaza, where they are going in there in the name of fighting Hamas, but also killing Palestinians and, and destroying them, you know, and going to places like the West Bank. So that, that's another argument. I agree me. with you 100% that if a military operation, you know, if the casualty or the collateral damage is yeah. beyond certain, let's say 10%, of course you, are, you have your, your date in the court. There are court marshals, there are uh, military processes that take care of that. If I go for an operation, and I lose even my own men, more than the required number that is gazetted, I will have my day in court. So if any military man goes to anywhere and maybe it was overbearing, then after the, there'll be investigation okay. and you'll, you'll, be, you'll, okay. be, you'll be tried. In all of this, you're talking about politicians. You want to talk about the role the Delta State government should be playing in all of this. Also, understanding the political structure in Delta and the antecedents of these players. I, I want you to elaborate on that. Secondly, you talked about fighting on two fronts. The first sector is the creek sector here, the South-South. The second sector is the insurgency and bantry that, that has opened up a new ecosystem. I mean, you just saw a couple of people that are released. What's your take? Do you think ransoms were paid? You know, or you think it was a military action that got there that brought people out? Why is it that we don't hear that the military, after ever rescuing the people, engage with these people and hurt them or arrest them. Because that's another sector that is opening. And so we're finding across two fronts in a country where we have less than 300,000 soldiers. Okay, let me start from, you've asked like three questions again. Let me ask from the, start from the governor. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I was in Sapley. You don't trust the governor of Delta I State? Do all, I am not home, all of them. All the governor in the South is even Doe Diri and all of that? I think the only person I can trust uh, in this country is Zulu of Bono State. Uh, I don't want to talk about those governors. They don't even know why they are the chief security of South State. They don't even know. And what the judge do is to share money and do things. So I don't want to talk about them. Uh, you don't trust they, their competence or their capacity. Let's, let's get it right. Both. They're not competent. And when you're not competent, you don't have capacity. Mention of them that has capacity or that is competent or that is there because of the interest of the people that is there to govern. Mention one. I've mentioned Zulum. So don't let's talk about them. Let's look at the issue of Delta. You know, you have the Joy Robo, you have all those, you know, I, I used to go on combat patrol in Wari, where they would write in their building. This is uh, Isokoma House. Yeah. Uh, they, they write and all those yeah, that was the, the yeah, They've before. always been having these conversations. And I'm talking about like, 1993, 1994, you know, but the other question you are asking, the third question was about, um, that's the last question you asked now. Yeah, I was like fighting across the front, the oh. war economy, that's the brilliant. fact that, yeah. do you think that even ransom was paid in this operation because... Ransom was, was paid, let me just answer that one. Really, are you sure? You have proof? Let them, let them debunk it, let them... 
take me on. The ransom was paid. In this Kaduna release? Oh, yes, ransom was paid. And that's that's another area I don't want to talk about. I asked about, about proof about. anyway. I said, you have proof, you know, because of the sake of balancing. I should give you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, just for the sake of balancing. No, 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 no. There, there's, uh, ransom was paid. You know, these guys, they took these guys and they said they want one billion. So one day they just woke up and they're so happy. You know, I said, okay, come and take the, 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 we are tired of them, come and take them. So, but the issue of two fronts is very, I, I'm talking to Tinubu now. He should not look at what is happening. He should not leave, leave this into all those governors because it's politics that are playing there. And they are taking the crude oil and stealing whatever they can get since the government is not doing what they're supposed to do. But Tinubu should pay attention. He cannot afford to fight war on two fronts. It can't. Even the military is not designed usually to fight on two fronts. And when you look at what happened in Israel, the Gaza, what the Hezbollah tried to do is to open another front in the north. So at the border of Lebanon, they tried to do that, but the Americans were there and they tried to suppress it quickly and quickly. It, it did not happen. Tinubu should try to douse what is happening. He should try to do dialogue with them. They just need some money, they need some care, they need some attention. And now they are starting, if the military make mistakes by doing the OD episode, uh, then... You think the military should be withdrawn from the Niger Delta now? Or should, should de-escalate tension from those communities? Yeah, I think at this point, if they've not been able to achieve their operational imperatives or the objectives, even by now, uh, then they should, they should pull out from there. They should allow the DSS. This is, at this point now, it's DSS and the police that they should allow to do the job. They, they pull it. The military should pull out. So do you think that the military is overstretched? Because increasingly, the Nigerian uh, military is doing uh, police work. Although, yes, the constitution says they can come in the aid of civilian authority, but they seem to be doing police work almost permanently. Do you have an issue with that? I've always told the, even when I was in the defense headquarters, I've told generals that they are, going, they are weakening the military by allowing us to work with the police on IS duties. IS duties is internal security duties. It's not our job. The question you should be asking media is that where is the DSS in Delta State? Don't they have state director of DSS in that place? Don't they? During uh, Obasanjo's time and Yaradu's time, DSS were very, very active. Very, very active. When we started prosecuting this Niger Delta issue, if you see what the DSS gave us, it was amazing. They were very proactive. They, are, they have schools, they have combat troops, and so they were very, very active. Where are they now? Somebody should be resigning from his job. Delta, don't they have commissioner or, of police? Or the political will on the part of the no, 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 administration? No, 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 no. That uh, is yeah, the problem. Yeah, no, when you look at the way this thing runs, policy, strategic level, operational level, and tactical level, uh, Tinubu has nothing to do with this one. If you are the director of DSS in Delta, so Tinubu should not tell you what to do. If you are the commissioner of police in, in, uh, in Delta, let's say in Wari or in Bayasa, so Tinubu should come and tell you what to do. So some of them should be going to their villages. Sorry, just to follow up on that, but do you think there was prior intelligence that they were going to hurt the military officers before they were killed? Uh, that's where you can talk about intelligence failure. And that is where I'm... Do you think there was probably prior intelligence out and probably that was on the doorstep of the governor and nothing was acted upon? No. That, that's not how it works. These guys were planning this operation weeks before that uh, something. They, just, they were just looking for the time and place to, to strike. Um, the, the field of intelligence is no more on the JTF or the military. It's more on the DSS. I know how the system works. The DSS, they are everywhere. They are all over. All those villages, all those places, they have DSS operatives there. How come they are not aware that this was going to happen? when they were loading the boats, when they were arming the boats, all their sources and agencies, their informants, where were they? This, this, this structure of security has collapsed, basically. We, we get the information from DSS, the, the DIA, all this operation I'm, I'm making out that we did. It was DSS that, was, that gave us the information to know where they are, what they are doing, because they have very active DSS in, the, in 2006, 2007. So I used to probably say that there was no information float of this possible attack out there anywhere. It's among the militants. If you want to ask that question, I want me to answer you. I remember I mentioned somewhere that you have these former militants 
that have embraced amnesty. They know. If you want to find out very well now, call the Tantita and ask how this happened. They know. Also, another follow up question. Do you think the former militants that embraced amnesty, are they still bunkering today? Yeah, some of them, I have their names. Some of them, they try to be politicians. Some of them fail this time. They wanted to be deputy, governor, they want to be senators, and they, none of them made it. So, um, are you think so they're back to bunkering? They never stopped bunkering. Even after the amnesty then? Yeah, they never stopped. And the schooling and everything, they yeah. never stopped bunkering. They were they still never, bunkering. They then. never stopped bunkering. It makes it, do you make it seem like this is an impossible situation to resolve? It's not impossible. Tinubu just have to do something now. So it's only the presidency that can it's resolve? It's the commander in chief that can do something. Right so, now, it should, be, it should be firing some of his aides. And I'm made bold to say that. Some of the people, say, I don't want to mention specific officers. Give us names. <laughs> you want to go for it? <laughs> but in terms of Caesar. what the military did in uh, Kaduna State, the military collaborating with the office of the NSA and local authorities and rescuing, well, we don't know the exact number. Some say 137, some say 287, some say uh, 168. What, what, what's your assessment of that operation? It's a circus. Uh, most of the thing you are saying is uh, deception, is lies. Deception? Yeah. Deception simply means lies surrounded, uh, not truth, surrounded by bodyguard of lies. There's some truths, but there are a lot of lies. If you want, negotiation is another process entirely. But if somebody says he wants to collect one billion, uh, you now say you collaborate. I think that collaboration should be in, in, in terms of the federal government helping with the funding. That's the collaboration. But the president says nobody should pay ransom. They paid. They paid. Have you got proof they, for this? They disobeyed because the commander in chief. I know the mind of terrorists. If they say they want one billion, they will not, without you, either killing them. They won't give you. They won't give up their price. The children are the price, and they've demanded for money. They now go to talk to them when they've risked their life. When they've uh, one of the the teachers was killed, and uh, you you just went and collect the boys. You negotiated with them. Some people even talk about gumi and so on. They collected money. You they must. You they have to buy more arms after this. They have to become stronger the, after the this. The negotiation ecosystem. Recently, uh, Mamu, Mamu, uh, Tuko Mamu was a, has been arrested by the authorities and everything. I mean, let's talk about the negotiation ecosystem because there's these professional negotiators that are getting into the, the, the creek, uh, the, these areas of the north with, with them. What can we do about that negotiator's no, ecosystem? No, 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 those ones, they are not negotiators now. But he's been arrested by the security forces. Uh, because he was simply helping himself. I know the person you're talking about, Toku Abi. Yeah. He was collecting money and having his own and was sharing, or just basically the sharing. Collecting money on behalf of who? Of himself and the terrorists. Because he wasn't collecting the money on behalf of government. He wasn't negotiating for because. Um, so so the, the negotiator's ecosystem, what, what, what can we do about them? Necessary evil or... It's you know, necessary no evil when you are having an asymmetry situation on your hands, you know. Somebody can just catch somebody and say, you must pay me or whatever. So it's an asymmetry situation. So it's necessary, but it's, it's not being done professionally. You know, who, who, who has, you have to appoint a negotiator. I studied negotiator in Harvard. You, mu you must appoint, and there are very, very tedious processes. So you can't just jump up, like Gumi will say, he's going to the bush to go and negotiate. Is it for himself, or is it for the federal government, or is it for the terrorists? Some of these people are supposed to have been arrested by now. They should be out of circulation. And I don't know why Tinobu is condoning some of these iniquities. It's been happening during Buhari time. And he's looking. Gumi is harassing him. Maybe, maybe some of the things Gumi said, if I say it on TV now, I will be arrested. And why is he condoning him? What no. is he afraid of? Maybe the president is not getting the appropriate advice. Do you well, think that's why he has Ribadu as he's, he's the NSA. And the NSA he's do, he should do his job. The NSA should not be going to negotiate with terrorists. What's your take on the NSA? Um, what's my take on the NSA? I mean, I, I cannot really uh, Capacity, rep competence wise? The, the, the choice of the commander in chief. If you say that's his choice, 
Why? Um, and you don't know what he wants out of him. Uh, but there are standards all over the world when you... Uh, what are those standards? Quickly as we wrap up, I know we have to go. What are those standards? In-depth knowledge of international security environment. Experience on the job, both field, experience, and you must command the respect of the armed forces of Nigeria. Okay. We well, finally, Commodore, they released the names of some uh, terrorism financiers recently. Do you think that's also deception? I've been shouting that they should arrest those guys. But this, this once they are arrested, or they put their name out, are just front desk officers. Receptionists. Okay. They're we'll, just we'll receptionists. Okay. All right, uh, Thank you very much. Commodore Kunle Olawumi, uh, you've left us with a lot to digest. Thank you so much for being so open and candid with your experience.